These works are the result of a competition last year organized by Sassol, uh, who make wax and they make candles. Well, they make the wax for candles, prices candles, uh, whose <laughs> motto is, we light up Africa. Uh, they didn't realize then how ironic it was. Apparently the rest of Africa doesn't have power, so we've joined them now. <laughs> the terms of the competition were simple. You had to use wax in some shape or form, either as the concept or as part of the material or as a reference of whatever you liked. And I took the way of using it as part of the uh, process. And I'll demonstrate the process to you downstairs. Uh, I'd used wax before on paper and for a, a series of abstract works years and years and years ago, and I thought I'd just revive that. But instead of doing it with, with abstract markings, I thought I'd use the human body, which I've been using for a while now, uh, with markings on, which are nominally tattoos, but in fact they're invented tattoos. Uh, and it seemed a good, good opportunity to use it in, in, in that particular way. Um, why, why tattoos and why, why the body? A, I, I, I love the body, and B, tattoos for me seem to, to be a way of talking about exactly what Aidan was saying, all the works that you ever do are autobiographical, automatically, you don't have to sit down and say, I'm going to talk about myself. You do talk about yourself because you talk about your own interests. And one of the things that strikes me about all of us, which I think makes us more interesting than most countries, is that we are mongrels that we have so many different strands in our, our lives and our wonderful varied history and we've come together and we use those. So what I'm trying to say, I suppose, although one doesn't try and say things, but one automatically does if you're interested in them, I'm talking about the multiplicity of references that we have in our, in our background. So part of the fun of going around this is to say, where does this come from and, 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 and what is it and what age? So they're from a variety of sources going back to prehistory and covering the whole world. There, a bit of um, um, Syria and, well, everything. And it's all jumbled together in no particular order. I never work with any kind of plan. I work by instinct, I work by hunch and I move from moment to moment rather than um, with, with a, a grand plan in mind. And if the work is any good, I'm surprised at, this, at, at the end of what it looks like. And if it doesn't surprise me at the end, then I know I've, I've, I've gone wrong. And the only way to get yourself right is to tear it up and start again and use the pieces. <laughs> What I've done is, if you see them against the light, and this is why I want to feel them, it's ordinary wax, uh, uh, ordinary tissue paper that you wrap parcels in, presents, and of course it comes in lots of colours, but I've used uh, white tissue paper, which I've then stained to make it look kind of old and interesting. Once I apply the wax with a, a hot iron, it turns from being totally opaque to translucent, and then quite magically, you can feel them it feels, has a sort of rather awful quality of skin, and so it's almost as if I've tattooed these people and then pulled the, the, the skin off, which has horrible Nazi connotations. But they, nonetheless, that's how they work. Um, I, I created a maze. They're not in particular order, they were in an, in an order in Johannesburg. I don't remember what that was, but then I taped on that, but I couldn't do it. And we started at the back and we put them up here. And we, ended up with the, instead of 41, we put up 40, which was quite, quite amazing. Thanks to Brenton, uh, who is a, a genius when it comes to putting up exhibitions. This is just um, if that's all I want to say now about these things, we'll look downstairs after Ian's finished his exhibition, stay and I'll show you how. I like this with, uh, this is terminal and this is the stage. Yeah. Uh, and sorry, this one was, I obviously hadn't boiled the tea enough, but, uh, it's a very faint sort of staining of tea, and this is a rather overstained piece of, of uh, turmeric. <laughs> and from there, I, I simply use these coloured inks, which are you know the the usual waterproof inks, and 
I think I said in some interview somewhere that I always use a Chinese brush, which um, I suppose I should come to confession. It's not true. <laughs> I was given a lovely Chinese brush by Hannah. Uh, they are the most complicated things to use if you're not Chinese, because they, they have a very soft set of bristles, which just dangle. If you do it this way, they all just flop this way. There's a special reason for that. The Chinese hold their brushes at the end like this, and they, they move across like this. And as they exert pressure, a, a fine line becomes a broad line and so on. Um, I have tried, and some of them were done with a Chinese brush, but I abandoned that, realizing that uh, I have a long time to not be Chinese. So what I've done is, I've simply used um, an ordinary fox hair brush, and all I, all, I, all I do then is paint onto it with various colors, like that. And once that is done, um, and I've, I've done, say, the outline of a figure, I then take one piece of paper and another piece of paper, and I pin them together, quite simply with first making pins, just to hold them in position. And then the next process is simply to apply the wax. And I'm just going to fold this back so I can put the wax on over here. Ah, uh, yes, I'll tell you. Uh, the fine lines in this um, big hanging, um, it's nylon. I've simply attached them to dolls there and, and taken them out on threads down, simply to reinforce them so they don't, they don't um, tear. I've finished. Um, this is a really tremendously basic process, and that's all I do. And then I use the wax as a glue, as it were, to weld the one sheet to the other. <laughs> now, as I said upstairs, once uh, two things happen. Once the, the wax is in it, like that, it intensifies the colour and also turns it into uh, a translucent sheet. So that you Now having done that, just imagine this is a beautiful bit of coin, which it isn't. So just use, use your imagination. Tearing for a reason. Because I wanted soft edges so that they blend in and didn't create hard lines. No, no, it's, it, it, no it's, it's wet at the moment, but I wouldn't have used it wet. I would cut it and dry, and I'm just for the purpose we don't stand all day watching paint dry. <laughs> so what I do now <laughs> is simply put one layer on top of the other, and because it's slightly transparent, the one shows through the other. So the and it wells in the legs. So this is one which we didn't hang for whatever reason. And you can see all the pins which turn out to be quite a decorative feature. The pins are all put down uh, to hold the various pieces in place. And I, I created soft edges because I just thought that was more artistic.